We saw the seven ages of the church. Now let's go through the seven seals, shall we? The first seal, we saw the first horseman. That was the Antichrist. The second one will be war. Now what's going on is that as we go through this verse-by-verse -verse study, if you start out the first verses in Revelation, notice when the Antichrist comes, the Bible says he came forth conquering and to conquer, correct? But if you compare that with Daniel chapter 11, as well as 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, the verse says that he has to come peaceably. So what does that mean? What that means is this, is that basically the Antichrist, when he comes in, it's proclamation of peace. But when they say peace, the Bible says, be, be forewarned, destruction will come. Right. So then what he's doing is that he's conquering, though. Through so-called words of peace, he's conquering. And that's not something new. For example, Winston Churchill, he gave this sign as victory, right? And we use that for peace. But how did they attain the peace? How did they attain the victory? Through conquering, full ultimate surrender. <clears throat> so when they say peace, it's not going to be like a peaceable timeline like you think. There's going to be war. The Bible warned that when he comes down with words of peace, be careful, war will be coming. So remember, he's conquering and to conquer. That means certain nations are going to disagree with the Antichrist UN. So, so there are going to be nations who are not going to agree with the UN. And so because they don't agree with that, then what's going to happen? These other nations, you heard me quite often call them rogue nations before. So the ones who are not joining the United Nations. These other outside nations, they're going to conflict with the United Nations. So what you'll notice right here, the color of this horse. Look at verse 3. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, come and see. So when they open up the second seal, remember there are four cherubims up in heaven, correct? And remember, these four cherubims, it's so interesting, they coincide with the four horsemen of Revelation. We saw that. It's as if Satan wants to compete with God. That's the idea. He has his riders. And God, he has his own riders, the cherubims. Uh, if you read the book of Psalms, I mentioned to you before that the Bible says that God rides on the wings of a cherub. See, could somebody please close the door? I don't have to say that, so if you can just please be mindful and do that. <laughs> okay, so you'll notice right here that the second ch cherubim is going to introduce the second horseman. Come and see. Verse 4, and there went out another horse that was, notice the color, red. Hmm. Think about the nations. Okay, so let's use our heads here. Think about nations that currently conflict with the United Nations today. Think about that. Okay, here's another thing to think about. Think about the nations whose favorite color is red. It's a no-brainer then, right? You don't have to be a scholar. See, I don't even have to tell you. If you're going to think about nations that's going to resist, not agree with the Antichrist United Nations, and their color is red, it's a no-brainer right here. It's communism. It's a communist. The Bible mentioned a lot of prophecy concerning about Russia. So what we're going to notice right here is that, oh, not only that, I forgot another one. But in Revelation, uh, I forgot the chapter. I think it's chapter 16. But in Revelation 16, it also talks about the kings of the east coming out. And it's as if the Antichrist has a difficult time with those nations as well. So if you're going to think about something that has to do with the Orient, and then the Bible prophesies about Russia, and not only that, the Bible talks about the nations being red and conflicting with the Antichrist United Nation, it's a no-brainer right there. Yeah. These are the communist countries. See that? 
even Russia today, despite of, oh, communism is dead and gone. No, if you look at today's president and the things going on in Russia, I mean, the, the roots, it's still in there, the roots. Even though publicly, officially, they say it's gone, the roots is still embedded in there. Uh, the president, where he came from, those kind of intelligence agencies, etc., they were all connected to communists. So you got to think about this, is that this nation... We've seen this throughout the past uh, years, scores of years, and do you think they're going to follow along with this program? No, they don't like this, right? That's why we're going to see this conflict going on, and there's going to be red war. Think also about the, mo the number of deaths that totaled more than Nazi Germany, believe it or not. You think World War II was bad with all the numbers of millions that died. But do you know the communist countries, they numbered more on the yeah. tolls of millions of deaths? Yeah. They didn't tell you that, right? Mm -hmm. So this makes more sense that these communist countries would be perfectly fitting the bill of Red War. And that means then, wow, that means so many millions are going to die. Yeah. Yep. Wow, pastor, you're scaring me. Good, get saved in Jesus Christ, yeah, yeah. get raptured, and don't go through this timeline. But it's coming. No matter how hard the United Nations try, see, this guy's going to try it too. Peace. But guess what? These nations are going to resist. So he has to conquer to attain the peace. He has to make them yield so they will result to war. Keep reading. And power was given to him that sat thereon to take what? Peace from the earth. Who's coming with words of peace? The Antichrist. So there's going to be a group out there who resists this peace. Now, if you're looking at current events, and not only that, past history, this is the best candidate right here. This is the best candidate. Uh, Red China, North Korea with their flag, Russia before um, the Soviet Union fell. You see their symbol with their red flags and everything. I mean, this is communism here. Notice right here, and, they, and that they should what? kill one another, and there was given unto him a great sword. So notice right here that they're going to be in conflict, killing one another. What's also interesting is that if you see the Soviet Union communism flag, the part of their symbol is the blade right there. And then notice right here that there's given unto him a great sword. See? How about that? So there's going to be war, conflict, with the communist nations, versus the United Nations. Now, keep your hand at Revelation 6. We're going to go to Matthew 24. Matthew 24. So you got to know this. Think about this. If Trump didn't have that, quote-unquote, successful conference with North Korea, and uh, he wasn't there as president to deal with uh, the communist dealings, and then there are some conspiracy conspiracies about his back deals with Russia. Look, I don't know about all that kind of stuff, but here's the thing is that basically you can see that that's that last strand that's preventing this outbreak. You see that? Yeah. That's how close we are. Yeah. It's that last strand. Now think about it when we have a different president. Wonder, we're going to think about what's going to turn out, right? Mm -hmm. We're at that last strand right yeah. there. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes you wonder if Trump wasn't president, we wonder what it would have turned out, right? So you got to think about that. All right, let's look at Matthew chapter 24. We're going to read verse 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the what? End of the world. Okay. So Jesus is going to explain how the tribulation starts. Look at how these horsemen come out. Pay attention. Verse 4. Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man, what? Deceive you. Whose job is to deceive the world? Yeah, the Antichrist. But keep reading. For many shall come in my name, saying what? I am Christ and shall deceive many. Here's your first one. Look at the sequence. Look at verse 6. And ye shall hear of what? Wars and rumors of wars. That's what's going to happen. There's going to be people not liking this guy. These communist nations like, no, nah, -uh, we don't like this guy right over here. So there's going to be war breaking out. The world's going to like him. 
but there's going to be these rogue nations that's not going to join the United Nations. All right, let's keep reading. See that ye be not troubled. Don't be troubled. Why? For all these things must come to pass. See, it has to come to pass, but the end is not yet. <laughs> Look at that. If this is the millions of tolls that are going to get slaughtered and the end is not yet, you can imagine how worse it's going to get. All right, let's keep reading right here. Notice it says, For nation shall rise against nation. See that? And kingdom against kingdom. So there has to be war breaking out. So guess what? World War II is not the last war. There's going to be World War III. So notice that World War III will break out. Now, in the Bible... There's going to be either in total four world wars or five. So it's either four to five world wars. That's why I can calculate right over here. So the reason why I'm saying four to five is because the fourth one is going to be Armageddon. The whole world is going to face against Jesus Christ. The fifth world war will be after the millennium. And the numbers are going to be actually greater than Armageddon. And those numbers are going to go against Jerusalem, against God's city after the end of the millennium. So that's how you get five world wars. Now the reason why uh, I say four to five is because this one may not be World War III. What this could be is just simply kind of like what we've heard throughout history, the Cold War, so to speak, right? So they didn't really give it like a World War name, but like the Cold Wars, uh, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, et cetera, et cetera. So it may be that these ones is, this one may not be officially called World War III. It could be continuing on the Cold Wars. Imagine, it, imagine calling it the Cold Wars II. And then one of the worst wars you can ever think of that military soldiers would talk about is the Vietnam War. And that is what? Under these guys. Now think about how bad it's going to be. And doing it all in the name of peace yeah. while soldiers are dying right. for their country thinking they're dying for a good cause. It's sad, right? It's sad. All right, let's look at back at Revelation 6. Okay, so we see right here that it's going to break out into a Cold War again or a World War III. So there's going to be a lot of death. But this, you ain't seen nothing yet. 